Good morning, good morning. Uh, thank you to the 14 kiddos that are already in. That's fantastic. If you got one more, jump in, jump in, please.
good, but it's good. All right, people, last period, they jumped at 87%, folks. Uh, period two, you guys started at 63%. We need big growth. Uh, I will throw out there that Dr. Fulton, you guys know who he is? One of the administrators? Yeah. He happened to walk in, so he jumped into the game just for fun, and he scored 76%, and he had never seen the words before. I mean, besides when he was in school and stuff. He does have a doctorate degree, I guess, that makes him uh, well educated, but yeah. So let's see if you can beat Dr. Fulton at 76% today. That's an individual challenge for all of you. All right, people, go. Thank you. 
30 seconds, people. Finish strong, folks. Finish strong. Come on, Burgundy team. Step up your game. Because our next activity, you get to use these notes, and that's where you show me you actually understand, not that just you can go find answers online, okay? So, uh, eight minutes, people. Let's see what we got. So, check in with people at your table. If you need help, if something doesn't make sense, that is what you're figuring out. Not, I know this because I know this. 
You know what I mean? Anyone's confused, let me know. They pay me to help you. You guys getting Jose caught up? Uh, he's doing it right now. All right. So, Jose, I, I told them yesterday, like, you can't figure everything out just based on the document. You got to go to, like, the yeah. Googles and look stuff up. Okay. Tell me how you know. Thank you. 
that you searched up, you actually understand instead of just like you found it, copied and pasted it in. down people you can have those notes open you should have already kind of answered this question so now you're showing me you get it okay so give me an example of direct democracy or an example of indirect democracy don't give me a definition give me an example I gave you definitions right here Legislative statute. Okay. This is a law. 
that is proposed to the citizens of California that we get a vote on, okay? If you vote yes, they're gonna provide this funding for these services. If you vote no, they won't do that, okay? But this is something that citizens directly vote on, okay? That's not typically how we do it in the United States, but California has direct democracy with propositions, an initiative system, where we decide certain laws, okay? Does that make sense? It's pretty cool. So, uh, I have not done any research. I don't know where the funding for that's gonna come from yet, but that looks like something I personally, as a teacher, uh, would definitely want to support. All right, Sandra with a C, what do you got? Give me an example of either direct or indirect democracy. Is the voters saying it? Electing a governor, and that's direct democracy. We are directly <coughs> voting for somebody. I would agree with you, but that's also indirect, right? Because when we elect a governor, what are we electing a governor to do? Don't say govern. <laughs> to represent us. So yes, we're directly voting on that person, which makes it direct democracy, but they're also a representative. So that's kind of both. Uh, totally works. Give me another example. Aiden, what do you guess, sir? Either direct or indirect. Direct. I only have what is direct to say. Okay, indirect. Not direct. Everything I have, somebody else already said. Really? Yes. Aw. All right. Tom, what do you got? Direct or indirect? Um, direct. Okay, example. It's a town in New England that has local affairs to it. Sorry, we're sorry, we're louder, sir. I can't hear you. In the U.S. Um, one example of direct democracy is a town in New England that has uh, local affairs through a direct democratic process. Good. I think what you're referring to is actually a town hall meeting. Oh, is that what it is? Meeting, yeah. Okay. So the town hall meeting is like people in the city, they literally go and they meet in the town hall. They discuss issues and the people from that town literally directly vote on a proposition. Okay. So it's the same thing as our proposition system in California, only specific to a town or a city, okay? That really only works in a small town, okay? We can't do that like in California, you can't have all the voters meet in one building to talk, right? Uh, Angie, what do you got? Direct, another one, what do we got, okay. That's indirect. When we elect local representatives, state representatives, federal representatives to make laws for us, that is indirect democracy, okay? Also called representative democracy. But I want an example of that. David, what do you got? Give me an example of a representative democracy that we practice here. Uh, the two, the two uh, representatives from each state that we vote for. Beautiful, they have a name. Does anybody know what the two representatives from each state are called? Senators. Senators, perfect. We elect two senators to represent us in Congress, okay? Beautiful. All right, people, good, good, good. So again, indirect democracy, republic, that's the form of government we practice here. Uh, we elect people to Congress, we elect people to the Senate, they go make laws for us. They make decisions for us, we elect them. They represent us, okay? Direct democracy, propositions that we have in California, for example, where voters directly vote on laws and make decisions, okay? Now, which one do you think is better? Take a side. Do you think direct democracy is better? Do you think indirect democracy is better? Uh-oh, I see indecisive people on the middle. That's okay. Let's see what we've got. What do we think? All right. We're all over the map. All right, people, have a conversation at your table. Which one do you think is better and why? And I'm going to call on some folks. you got to defend yourself, okay? Talk to the people at your table. Which is better and why? Uh, I feel like it depends on like, your area. If you live in like, like a big town, I'd say indirect because like there's too much people and not a lot of people are gonna agree with each other. Or with me at least. This is what I would like at least on uh, direct. Uh, it was a small town because uh, it's easier convincing a uh, small amount of people than a uh, big amount of people. 
All right, people, let's go ahead and bring it back. Uh, Chris, you're my first victim. Well, what do you think, sir? Which one's better? Okay, that, that's the right answer. <laughs> uh, so can you give me uh, upside to one or the other? Or downside to either one? Okay, so downside, one downside to direct democracy is that, you know, that sometimes people are dumb. I don't know, they're like dumb decisions. And as for indirect democracy, they Okay, sorry. There sorry. you go. Thank you. Misguided. Politically correct. Yes. And as for indirect, um, like, um, I don't know, sometimes people are voted. Okay, sometimes you can go up. Sorry, sorry. There you go. That, that's a better word. Thank you. So, uh, the benefits of, or the downside of direct is there's some uneducated people out there that would be making decisions. And the downside of indirect is sometimes people are elected that really don't know what they're doing, anyways. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, Evangelo, what do you got, sir? Um, I put direct. Okay, and why do you think that's better? Um, because it works well with a small group. Of a big one. Say it again. Something about a small group, I couldn't hear you. Well, because it, wor it works better with a small group instead of a big group. Okay. Yeah, it works better with a small group. Direct democracy is better for a small group. So when the people directly get to make decisions for that group. Where it becomes a challenge, though, is we got 339 million people in the United States. Can we get 339 million people to vote on things all the time? Is that realistic? No, we got jobs, we got lives, we got responsibilities, okay? That's where indirect democracy comes in. We choose somebody to represent us because then their full-time job is making what they think are the best decisions for us. If they make bad decisions for us, we just don't really like them, okay? So there's pluses and minuses to both. That's why we have both in this country. All right, people, uh, kind of a similar idea, right? Uh, which of these types of governments have the best advantages, okay? So you have unitary, federal, and confederate forms of government. Which one do you think has the best advantages? Which one do you think is best? Yes, sir. Like for advantages, are you talking about like power or? Ooh, yeah, no, it's not which one's the most powerful. Which one do you think is the best or most effective, right? Is gonna benefit the people the most? Good question, sir, thank you. While you're responding, check in with your group. I'm going to have a folks share out on this one, too. Uh, there's not really a wrong answer, it's just which do you think is going to be best for our country? Oh my god, the little cats have little signs you can get. My wife just wanted a bunch of cats. Now we have to find someone here. It's a miniature Stanley. Okay. All right, people, check in with your group. 20 seconds, and I'm calling on somebody. Which is best for the people? Uh, I say uh, the federal government is the most effective because it prevents tyranny and divides the power. Yes. It's the federal government because it's the federal government. Oh, man. I never had this right like that. I'm going to get upset about that. I'll let you make the next victim. That way you can go here. Alright, Angie's going first. Uh, which one has the greatest advantage? Angie. Oh my god, I can barely hear you all right here. Okay, talk, talk so you can. I can hear you all the way over here. Go ahead, Angie. What's your uh, group decide? Okay, because? Okay, who are the co-equal partners? States and? Okay, good, so there's a lot going on here, right? When you have the federal government making decisions and states and they all have to mostly majority agree, that means you got a lot of representation by the people. You got a lot of check on power, okay? 
Nice. I want one more. Tom, what do you got? Which one do you think is best and why? Uh, federal government. Because? Uh, we pay taxes. <laughs> we actually pay taxes to the state and the federal government. Is that good? Do you like paying taxes? And then we get tax in return. Well, we don't get taxes, but we get services in return? Okay. Services. No, that works, right? So we pay state taxes. Your state taxes actually pay for my salary. You guys know that? Your state taxes actually pay for the computers in front of you in the school, right? So we get services from the state, okay? We also get services from the federal government, okay? That's going to be in the form of things like food stamps, Medicare, Social Security, protection from our military, okay? So we have services provided at both the state and the federal level uh, based on the taxes we pay. So very nice. All right. All right, people. Now you got to stop and think. Okay, what are some powers that the national government, the United States government, can do? What are some powers that only the states can do? If you don't know, go figure it out. I'll we'll give you guys about a minute. Go look it up. What are specific state powers? What are specific federal government powers? Once you know, you already know. I mean. Sure about that. Did you look it up? Yeah. I'm gonna come back to you and check in with you, okay? Let's make sure that we figure it out. Dylan's not with us. Mama, what do you got? Either a national power or a state power. I heard two things. I heard healthcare and education. Okay, good. So healthcare right now goes through states. Education goes through states. Okay, so my teaching license is from California. I cannot go teach in Nevada, <coughs> Texas, or New York unless I get a teaching license from those states. Okay, does that make sense? So licenses in general come from states. Anybody have a driver's license in here? Does it say American driver's license? No, no what does it say? California. Licensing comes from states. That is a state power. Okay. Nice. Let's get some federal powers in here. Alex, what do you got, sir? Okay, so the federal power and the national power is declaring war. Canada invades Washington, right? Can Washington declare war on Canada? No. The United States government has to do it, okay? California can't go to war with uh, China, right? It would be the United States going to war with China. Okay, so declaring war, that is a national government power only. Okay? All right, beautiful. So to reiterate, people, we have federal powers. All that the federal or national government can do. We have our state powers that only states can do. But we also have shared powers. You know what my least favorite shared power is? 
Somebody already brought it up. Taxes, that is right. We pay state taxes and we pay federal taxes. When you're an adult, when you already are, and you go get that job and you look at all this crap coming out of your paycheck, some of that stuff's going to the federal government, some of it's going to the state. Uh, it's super awesome. That was sarcastic, by the way. Okay, figure it out, people. Who has the power in this country? We got federal powers, we got state powers, we got shared powers. Who has the power? Or who do you think is most powerful? Who has the power? We saw kitty licenses. Neither. These are both kid licenses. See, watch when you become an adult. They change the orientation. That is an adult license. You're provisional until 21. So you know Rihanna thinks she's special because she's 18 and she's like, I'm an adult. She's still got the kid license until 21. Facts. Does anybody have all the power? No, what they do with the power? They divided it up, okay? That's gonna be a super important thing to remember when we get to your summative, right? What they write into the Constitution to protect us, they've divided the powers in lots of different ways. And you're gonna see this again and again, okay? Speaking of which, checks and balances. Which branch is most powerful and why? Or not. Which branch is most powerful? There's not a right answer here, so if you see something that's different than what you said, don't go change your answer, okay? Be your own person, stick to your guns. <coughs> All right, so we said as a class, none of the above. Okay, so there's a reason for that, right? There's checks and balances on every branch, right? President gets elected, if he starts screwing up and he violates the law, the legislative branch can kick him out. That's called impeachment, right? Similarly, the president decides who goes on the Supreme Court. But again, if the Supreme Court justices are violating the law, the legislative branch gets to kick them out, okay? The executive branch can write executive orders, which are just like laws, which is kind of overstepping the powers of the lawmaking or legislative branch. So there's different powers, and it's all divided, and they all got checks on each other. So the goal here is for no branch to have too much power, okay? So technically, they're co-equal, technically. Uh, I would make the argument the legislative branch is the most powerful, but we got a whole unit about that, and we'll discover that as we go. All right, people, there you go. Here's your big question. Show me you get it. What type of government does the U.S. practice, okay? And is it a democracy? And if it is a democracy, what kind of democracy? How do you know that?
ending power series in the month of the day. In later months of the day. Okay? 
So uh, there's going to be a blue team member, a pink one, a yellow. We're going to call this green. I get that it's like an ugly yellowish green. I don't even know what this is, but we're calling it green. Okay. So. Pick your color, write your name, folks. Just pick one. Uh, Green. It, it's all equal. Trust.
All right, good morning. Uh, no new work today. Uh, what I need you to do is finish up the work that I've given. So, uh, love, uh, male, female question, uh, questions, reproductions, and uh, looks like all of you are turning your old assignments. That's good. We're just going to take it in. Uh, so, turn your work. Uh, use the time to finish your questions, review your notes. Uh, we have two more sections to go for this section, this chapter. And then we'll have our test next week. So we're looking at Tuesday next week. So review Monday, Tuesday test. So one more assignment tomorrow. And then that's it. We'll turn in those uh, next week with the test, OK? So just make sure you're up. If you're done, I would just take, take some time and maybe just review the stuff we've done. Uh, if you're done with everything, you can work on something else. But most of you can finish up that one assignment, OK? So extra day today. I usually give you time for people to finish your work. And then we'll move on tomorrow. We'll see if you have any questions.
sometimes I feel like motivational talker. You know, um, and sometimes I feel like I just talk to myself because you guys are all in your computer screens and nobody is even listening to me. That's good. Right? How do you say the second one? Second one. Like, the, the, the angels. What were, what were we just discussing? Yeah. <laughs> 
Had to finish the paragraph today.
finish the paragraph assignment today? Yeah. It's really, just do one sentence at a time. All right, I might not finish today. Okay. Uh, give it a shot in like up to like 10, 15 minutes. If you want me to help you, I can. All right. Okay? Tex Amigos Brothers by uh, something, what's the name? Something Thomas. Uh, he showed how Antonio and, and Fides can go to each other. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Have you? I uh, need to say his means yeah. matters, Charlie. Sorry. Uh, try to get back up for a second, guys. Need to say his means matters, or right here, guys, just come back, Damien. Uh, thank you. Come grab one and then put it back when you're done. Okay? Thank you. Okay. And when they're still coming back up?
done work for someone because I went to get every day and work for someone to help find Oh, it's not. I'm just going to give this to the other person. Okay. Sorry, can you say something about Mark? Oh. Damn it, I don't know where you're going. I don't know. Can you say something about Mark? I'm listening to you. Listen to you. Listen to you. Listen to you. Ooh. Mm -hmm. 
to check the assignment.